QuickBooks Online 2022 Bank Reconciliation Bank Feeds First Month. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our bank feed practice file. We set up with a 30 day free trial, holding down control, scrolling up a bit to get to the one, two, five percent currently in the home page. Otherwise known as the get things done page, the business view as compared to the accountant view. If you want to change to the accountant view, it's something you can do by going to the cog up top, switch to accountant view down below. We will be toggling back and forth between the two views, either here or jumping over to the sample company currently in the accountant view. Back on over to the bank feed practice file, opening up a couple tabs to put reports in by going to the tab up top, right clicking on it and duplicating it. Tab to the left, right click on it and duplicate again. We're going to go back to the sample company just to look at where the reports are located in the uh, accountant view, which is on the left hand side under reports. Back on over to the business view. It's still thinking, but that's okay. We're in the second tab here. We're going to go into the business overview and open up a couple of reports. You probably know the ones too. You know which reports we're opening up here. We're going to go into the reports to do that. Close up the hamburger. Balance sheet. That's right. The balance sheet. Let's do it for three months this time from 09, 01, uh, 21 to, let's say, 11, 30, 21. And then I'm going to hit the drop down here and say I want to do it on a month by month comparison and then run it. So now we've got the Sept, Oct, and November. And these are going to be our dates. Uh, as of that point in time, we're going to be focusing in our, our checking account information. Tapping to the right then, we're going to go into the uh, business overview again. Reports again. Closing up the hamburger. We're looking at the profit and loss this time. We're going to do that three months at the top. Three months from 09, 01, uh, 21 to 11, 30, 21, and hit the months drop down or this drop down and then the months. Display columns by drop down and then months and then run it. So now we've got our income statement September, October, November, and the total information here. Now we're going to be focusing in on the balance sheet, going to the first tab on the cash accounts up top and doing the bank reconciliation process. N note that as we do the bank reconciliation, it will be an internal control that you want to do no matter what kind of industry that you're in or what type of business that you are running, but it will be a lot easier to do the bank reconciliation if you're in that type of industry where you're basically dependent on the bank in order to record the transactions because you're not gonna have those timing differences in that case, including the outstanding checks and outstanding deposits so it'll be an easier process but one you still want to do because it will be safeguarding against for example missing transactions having the bank feeds for whatever reason not importing the transaction or you having deleted them somehow in some way or having the bank feeds enter two transactions so that you've up doubled up on some kind of transaction so what we want to do is compare what we have in our books to the bank if we're doing a full service type of bookkeeping system we want to do the bank reconciliation process to double check our records to the bank and you have a bigger kind of internal control and it takes a bigger role and is even uh, more important in a lot of ways in that type of system so if i go back on over to our flow chart here just remember that we mainly did our accounting system as if we're dependent on the bank so not only on a cash basis system but we, we said, we're going to wait till everything clears the bank. So for example, the deposits, we waited till they cleared the bank. We didn't record the create sales receipt, which would be a cash basis system in that in which we're using the full service cash basis system, but rather depended on the bank for most of the transactions. Although we had a few transactions where we did jump on over to an invoice and accrual kind of component and using the create sales receipts. The more you're dependent on the bank, if you did all your transactions just constructed from the bank feeds, then you're not gonna have a difference between your books and the banks if everything pulled in properly because you're not gonna have any outstanding items. If you have a full service bookkeeping system in which whether you're on a cash basis or accrual basis, you record the transactions first as they occur and then you, you compare your transactions to the bank statement uh, you will typically have outstanding checks and deposits, especially if you're actually using physical checks. It's quite likely that you're going to have outstanding checks because it takes a lot longer for them to clear. But even with, with um, electronic transfers, it takes a little bit of time for them to clear. So you might still have some outstanding checks and 
uh, deposits that are timing differences between when you entered them into the system and when they actually cleared uh, through the system. The more you do electronic transfers, the more you record your transactions actually from the bank and verify them as clearing before recording them, the more likely you're not going to have as many differences and you still want to do the reconciliation, but you're really checking to see if you double input anything or if you kind of uh, deleted something or missed the input of something. This is going to be our mock bank statement. So we've got, uh, we're going to do September and then October. Now the September one, that's the first one we started entering data for. So the first problem we have when we do the first bank reconciliation, whether you use bank feeds or not, is that that beginning balance number may not be there because you're going to have the cutoff date that starts at that point in time. Note that the software for QuickBooks is not software that's going to pull in the ending balance and we're not doing the bank reconciliation just to verify the ending balance of cash. We're doing the bank reconciliation because we want to verify all the transactions that have happened in the system. In other words, by us entering the bank reconciliation, by us entering cash transactions, for example, there's a double entry accounting system. So everything we enter into cash is also having an impact, say, on the income statement a lot of times as well. So in other words, the deposits are typically increasing income and the uh, the decreases are typically increasing the expenses. So it's not just that we're trying to verify the checking account over here uh, in order to in order to do the bank reconciliations. It's much bigger than that. We're verifying that all the activity, if I go into the activity here, that all this activity has been entered properly. And if it has, that not only affects the uh, checking account, but it also verifies that we have at least entered the transactions somewhere else on our books. So it, we at least have the transactions in the system. That's why it's a big internal control. We could still make errors. We could still post, post them to the wrong account and whatnot. But it's a huge internal control against basically not having entered something uh, and, and being able to to have the double entry accounting system be in balance just with the balance sheet being in balance. Those two things are really big internal controls and makes it a lot more likely that your financial statements are correct. So to do that internal control, we're going to compare our financial statements as of a point in time to the bank and then do a reconciliation comparing the activity that has taken place. If we're dependent on the bank, then normally these ending balances will actually match what's on the bank statement because we created our books exactly from the data that's on the bank statements. However, if we're doing a more full service system, then what's on our books as of this point in time will not make the banks will not match what's on the bank statement as of that point in time. And we'll have to do the process of a reconciliation to make a report to tell us exactly what the difference is, which would typically be outstanding checks and deposits, those which we put into the system, but which have not yet cleared the bank. And it's okay that that's a, that that is the case because they will hopefully clear in the future and if we know exactly what the difference is we can verify all other transactions the beginning balance here even if we're dependent on the bank will not match what's on the bank statement because that beginning balance has not been input in the system so the quickbooks is not going to try to get the ending balance correct that's not the objective of quickbooks it's the objective to get all the detail in so that we can verify that the detail is done correctly and then get our balance to the ending balance. And in so doing, we were able to construct our, our books. There's other software that will pull in all the ending balances from your financial statements just to, create a, just to create a balance sheet, but you can't create a double entry accounting system by doing that. Okay, so then, it, so if I go back on over here, we can see that that number is different than our ending balance here. Part of that is gonna be the beginning balance that we have to put into place. So let's do this. We're gonna go into our, our banking account. I'm gonna go to the first tab. And if you're in, the accountant view, then you're going to go into the bookkeeping on the left hand side. And then we're looking at the reconcile. If you were in the other view and the accountant view, you would be going into the accounting on the left hand side and then reconcile up top. Okay, so then we're going to hit the drop down and we're going to be looking at the checking account that we want to be reconciling this time. The beginning balance note is at zero. So that's going to be our first problem. So to get that beginning balance correct, what I can do is just go into the register, enter the beginning balance. It's not going to change this zero at this point in time, but I can check it off in the process of the first bank reconciliation, which is what we will do here. And then going forward, that beginning balance will be correct. So let's do that process. To do that, I'm going to right click on the tab up top. I'm going to duplicate it. 
and I'm going to go into the register. So let's go into the register by going into the the bookkeeping on the left hand side and then bookkeeping on the left hand side. I'm going to go into the chart of accounts and close up the hand boogie. And I'm going to go into the register for the checking account. And I'm just going to add that beginning balance. The other side I'm going to be putting into equity. You typically want to do this at the beginning uh, or possibly pr uh, prior to the first uh, period that you're going to be recording. So if you can have a full year of the current data and put your prior year data as of the beginning of the prior year, like December, and start your current data in November, I mean, in January, that would be good. But we're going to put it to equity either way, so it shouldn't be a big deal either way. So we're going to hit the deposit. Just do it. Just do it here. So I'm going to put this in 0101, and I'll put this in as of the prior year, 20. Let's do it this way. I'll put it in as of 1231.20. And then I'm going to say this is the beginning balance. And I'm going to put that in a deposit. And it's going to be for that $10,000. That's our beginning balance on our bank statement right there. So that's what we want. The other side is not going to go to the income statement. It's going to go to equity. And the rationale is that all the other beginning balances we would have to set up independently if it's coming from another accounting system. And if it was income, it was recorded in the prior period and it's gonna roll into equity by this point. So we're gonna put it into say retained earnings, retained earnings. So there it is, there's our transaction. Let's uh, save it, save it. And then what's that gonna do? Well, if I go back on over to my, to my balance sheet and run it again, we now have an increase in September, September for the checking account. Well, it's, it's gonna be included in September. Let's bring this all the way back from to 1231.20, uh, 1231.20. There's our 10,000 right there. There's our deposit that we have put in place. The other side's going to retained earnings. So I'm gonna go back up top, back to our balance sheet. And the retained earnings is a little tricky. You can't drill down on the retained earnings. So it won't let you kind of drill down on it from here. I won't do it this time, but you've seen it in the past that you could basically go into the general ledger report and see the detail if you wanted to see the activity. So be aware of that. If you need to get into the retained earnings, you can't use the Zoom feature, but you can run a report if something has been posted to it called a general ledger report. Okay, so I'm gonna go back up, to, up top and let's go to the first tab then. And so that's the, the uh, ending balance. I know that that's coming from the bank statement. It's going to be the 2554802055.80. Is that right? Let's check it one more time. 2055.8020. Yep. Okay. And then the date is going to be as of the end of September, September 30th, 2021, right? Is that what we have on the date here? That's right. Okay, let's start it. Let's get this going. Let's get going. So here's the statement ending balance. That's the ending balance. That's gotta be equal to the cleared balance, which is everything that we're going to be checking off. Anything that's not cleared is gonna be the reconciling items. Our biggest problem here is we don't have that beginning balance. It's not gonna show up as that beginning balance for us here. But if I just check it off right there, then it's kind of like the same thing. So it's a little bit of a problem. It's a little bit of added twist. That's what you have to deal with on that beginning. Uh, the first bank rec after this, it'll all roll forward uh, fine after that point. Also note that everything down here in the green, they kind of uh, checked off with the bank feeds. So these have basically been checked off because they, they went through with the bank feeds. Now, if you were completely dependent on the bank, then then these transactions you you basically could check all these off and they would all already be checked off and you would have a difference of zero and you could just go forward from there and it'll be nice and easy if you're not completely diff dependent on the bank then you're going to have some timing differences and still it might do it for you because all these items will be checked off already and then the ones that aren't checked off might be might be the going to be some of the differentiating factors however if there's a problem this whole thing of having them having them checked off is is not going to be as as beneficial because you're still going to have to go through the whole bank reconciliation process of taking and tying everything out which is what we're going to do now so i'm going to say okay i'm not in balance i need this to be at zero in, in order to reconcile i should be able to do it 
because if it's on the bank statement and if it's not on our books and the bank is right, I need to fix my books. If it's on my books and not on the bank statement, it might be an outstanding check. And that's what we're going to basically look for. So I'm going to uncheck the whole thing so I can go back in here and tick and tie them out. Typically to do this as easy as possible, I'm going to uncheck these two is to is to uh, re focus on either the payments or the deposits first. So I'm going to filter this down to the deposits and I'm just going to tick this tie tick and tie out as quickly as possible. The 10,000 we already have. I'm going to uncheck that. Why is that checked? 10,000 is is what we've got up top. If I uncheck that, there it is. And there's one payment that seems like it's still checked off here. I told you to uncheck. I told you uncheck. So now nothing's checked off except the 10,000. I'm going to go into the deposits. There's the 10,000. So now I'm going to go back and forth, ticking and tying things off, ticking and tying, ticking and tying. I got the 10,000. It's not in the beginning balance, but I'm going to say it's good anyways. Then I'm going to tick off all of the deposits. So I'm going from the bank statement here to the books because if it's on the bank statement, it should be on the books, not necessarily the case vice versa. If you're looking at deposits, you'll have at least the date and the amount that should be tying out. Uh, and if it's a transfer, you'll also might have some more information like the description that can help you to kind of figure out which is which. So I've got the 3814. Let's go 3814. And let's do that. 3814 back on over. Is there a deposit 3814? There is that. And then I'm going to go back over here and say, we're, I, I gotta, I gotta get this down. I'm going too slow. 3814. Let's do two at a time. 6003 and 9999. 6003. So there's the 9999. There's the 6003. Good. And so then I'm going to say, all right, let's go back on over to this one and say we check it. We're going to check those two off. I checked them out. Now I'm checking them off. Check them out and check them off. 1887, 1907. So there's the 1887, 1907. Checked it out and checked them off. Let's, or I checked them out. Now let's check them off. I can't remember where to go though. I can't remember where to go. I'm lost. I'm lost. My mouse is going in circles. 1099, 85, and 1907. So we're going to say there's the 1000 and the 1907. They might not be in exactly the same order. And note that the dates on our on our records are usually going to be before. They should basically always be before. This is a mock problem, so I might not have done it perfectly, but they should always be before the dates that are going to be in uh, on the bank statement because we knew about the process first, or they might be at the same time if we constructed our bank statement directly from or our books directly from the bank feeds. 9286 and 1060. So 9286, 9286 and 1060. And so there are those two. So let's go back on over 9286 and 1060. And then we've got the 5607 and the 54436. Okay. So 5607, 55436. Five, five, I think that was the one going back on over. Yellow fine it, yellow fi. It's been yellow fied. That's the process of making it yellow. I made that up myself. 140 and 41. So 140 and then 41. Done. 140 and 41. Done. So we're going to go back on over and say yellow fi. Yellow fi. Defy the yellow fi. 7220 and 1907. 7 to 7220 1907 all of those are checked off except these two we're going to imagine that those are basically outstanding checks uh, or outstanding deposits which seems unlikely since they're at the beginning of the time period here but uh, we're gonna we're gonna leave it as is and so those are the ones of course we would want to check out if they were at the end of the period we would say oh, well those are probably outstanding items that uh, that are that are there if they're if they haven't cleared, then we would check if they cleared afterwards. And if they cleared afterwards, then we can see they're legitimate. If they haven't, then we're going to say there's a problem there. Maybe we need should we should be removing those in some way, shape, or form. Obviously, those came up in our practice problem, I believe, because they were test transactions as we were testing moving away from a cash basis 
or one which were dependent on the bank to more of an accrual example. Let's go to the payment side of things. Let's do that. That'll be fun. Payment side. And so these are the decreases doing the same ticking and tying. Tick and tie. You can't tie and tick because it doesn't sound as good. Where am I going? Where are you going, mouse? The mouse is lost. 194448. 194448. So where's that? 194448. Going back on over and saying, Mouse, you don't know where you are. Where's the food? Where's the food? My mouse wants 3660362. Oh, 3660362. 03 oh, and then 6238, was it? 6238? I believe it was indeed 6238. 75, 25, 50, 75, 25, 50, 75, 25, 75, 25, 75, 25, 50. And then, okay, so I'm going to go back on over. The dates might not be perfect. Bear with me. It's a practice problem. Yes, there is a bear with me. There's a bear with me, but it's a nice bear. 30, 50, 32, 80. 32, 30, 50. So there's a 50. 30, 32, 80. So there we have it. We're missing this one, which again, I'm assuming possibly was from a practice problem kind of scenario where we were, where we were basically moving away from a, from a pure basis of dependent on the bank. But in theory, we might have things that haven't been checked off. And if it was a check in particular, it's likely that we entered it in our system. They have not yet cleared the bank. So anything that hasn't cleared the bank yet, we could then we could then verify because when we do the reconciliation as of a point in time in this case september 30th it's usually it's going to have to be sometime after that point so we can go to our bank account and see if these items have cleared if they have great it's just a timing difference and this is the reconciliation process if they have not then we we're going to have to go in and uh, and possibly take action on it and say okay is it did i enter something incorrectly in our system did we did we enter something twice for example or something like that and take action from that point so you can see we're in balance because there's no difference so we've got the statement balance that's what was on the statement we've got the clear balance that's not all the stuff that's not everything because we had some stuff we didn't check off it's all the stuff we checked off is the cleared balance this is not the bank reconciliation here, the screen. This is the reconciling process. The bank reconciliation is the report that will now be generated from the uncleared items that will be the difference between what is on the book and what is on the bank as of the cutoff date, 63021. So you don't want to hit the finish button until you have this at zero. If it's not, a, if it's like a one, you got like one dollar in it. You can say, well, that's one dollar. I don't care. I'll, it's immaterial to decision making. But remember, you're not trying to get the bank balance to be correct. That's not the point. The point is to get all the other transactions correct that are that you're recording as you enter things to cash. And if it's one dollar off, that means that it could be like five deposits and 20 checks that caused a one dollar to be off if you netted them out which means it could have a substantial difference on your on your actual financial statements, even though it's only $1. If you get it down to a zero, then the confidence goes way up that you've actually entered all the transactions that have cleared the bank properly in your system, not only making the bank statement correct, but making all the other transactions correct as well. And you should be able to do that because again, all you're doing is ticking tying on the bank to your books. If it's on the bank statement, it should be something you should check off on your books unless something's wrong in which case you got to fix your books if it's on your books and not on the bank statement maybe it's an outstanding item which means it's just a timing difference that's what we're looking for which would only be there if you're not dependent on the bank to enter the transactions but you're ending, entering them independently or it's an error in which case you can take action and correct whatever mis miscalculation happened in the error be careful on deleting things or stuff in prior years in particular uh, when you're correcting things okay so let's go ahead and finish it finish it for crying out loud stop talking talking's what i that's my profession here i'm a professional talker just click the all right so if we go to the we can go to the history now and then we're going to have our report so that we can view the report 
and so there it is so we've got the bank feeds reports a long kind of intimidating report but uh in essence the meat of it's in the middle see right here you got your summary the beginning balance is not right it will be next time when we do the second one but that's because we had that beginning balance problem so that doesn't tie out to the beginning balance on the bank statement and then we've got the checks and cleared items so the checks and cleared items on the 258619 if we go over here we got the 258619 and then the deposits are at the 231499 which is over here uh, is uh, different by the 10,000 because we added the that's where that 10,000 is at that's where the beginning balance so the beginning balance instead of having 10,000 that's included in that number we got to recognize that for the first bank reconciliation then we got the state the uh, statement balance 20,55480 that's going to be the bank statement they mean 20,55480 and then we've got the unclear transactions here so that's what we didn't check off so now it's saying these are the things that are the difference between the bank statement and us the things we didn't check off and the register balance the 14 437 60 which ties out to what's on our balance sheet 14 437 60 right there right 14 437 60 right so that's the, that this from here to here is really the reconciliation this is what's on the bank statement this is the difference this is what's on our books however this is not sufficient this unclear transactions we want to know what those transactions are if you were to if an auditor asked you for a bank reconciliation this is the report they would want but if you just give them the summary area it's not enough because i need to know what the, what are those amounts that make up that six one one two seven twenty and are they legitimate amounts that should be there So for that, I can go down. I got the detail for the checks payment cleared, which is on the bank statement deposit. Now they're cleared. Those are in essence on the bank statement too. Additional information, unclear checks. uh, That's the one we're looking for. So if I pulled out the trusty uh, calculator here to do some calculations with, we're looking for these uncleared items of the 7167.29. And on the deposit side, we had minus the 1050.09. That's the 611720, you'll recall. That's what we want. That's what we want on the detail so we can see these actual items possibly looking then in future periods to see if they have cleared in future periods. If they have, great. They're just timing differences and they're the reconciling items as of this point in time. If they have not, then are they going to clear? Is Are these transactions entered in error? And we can take action on those at that point. But these items that have not cleared are not really the main point they're they're one of the points of the bank reconciliation but the main point is if i know exactly what this difference is then that gives me more assurance that all the ones that did clear all the transactions we have put into the system that are input through the cash transactions are correct and that means that all the other side of the transactions that helped us create basically the whole income statement the whole other financial statements are at least something that should be in the system if not possibly recorded to the proper account right so that's a huge uh internal control that's what we're looking for uh with that notice also that these reports are a little bit uh kind of tricky and with the bank reconciliations they're a little bit different than other reports meaning they're an internal control report rather than rather than something that's being created as we do the data input so if you delete something for example in the past uh it in in this report changed as you deleted it it would throw you out of balance in the reconciliation so this report has to be a static report and you might even want to print it out i think it keeps them as a static report even if you change something but i usually print them out for that reason so that if someone changes something in the past and my reconciliation no longer is reconciled i can go back in and kind of try to figure out what has happened so we'll do the second bank reconciliation next time and that in that case we won't have that beginning balance issue and it should be a really easy process